Thanks for tuning in to this Friday night edition of our starting lineup report on Prime Sports Network. You can also check out our motorsports coverage over on Mystery Caution. That is our motorsports channel with the link in the description. And most of our coverage over there uh, includes the entire video that we produce every Tuesday. Me and TJ were doing, we put that out on Tuesdays. So the entire, and what I say by entire is, is whenever we have NASCAR and F1 coverage. Now there will be no F1 coverage for about a month. Um, and then when F1 does come back, there's only a couple more weeks left in NASCAR season. Uh, so uh, there's that. But just keep that in mind. And as well, our F1 coverage does get posted over on the Mystery Caution channel, not here on Prime Sports Network. We've got a lot of changes coming up, too. A lot of positive changes here on Prime Sports Network. A lot of things working on behind the scenes. And we're going to keep going here uh, for the NASCAR season, though. Nothing's going to change. Uh, this is something that should really help us out for next season. But I'll get in uh, you know, uh, touch with you guys once I have a little bit more firm grasp on when all that really good stuff's going to happen. Let's talk about tonight's practice and qualifying results. The speed charts from over at Bristol. Uh, one of the best tracks, if not the best track in the series. And Alex Bowman is on the pole. That's right. My top long shot play from Tuesday's show was on the pole. So forget about getting 40 to 1 now on Alex Bowman. That is not going to happen. Instead, uh, you're probably going to... I see, I don't know where he'll be, even though he's on the pole. Uh, he's, he's still not going to be with, with, with the favorites, of course. Uh, but, uh, you know... I don't know. I'm going to guess you're going to get somewhere between 10 and 15 to 1. That's what I'm going to guess. Anything lower than that, forget it. Uh, matter of fact, I wouldn't even take Bowman now at 10 to 1. Or I don't know if I take him at 12 to 1. That's borderline. Uh, if you're still getting 15 to 1, maybe even 20. I have no idea. I mean, sometimes they make... Because just keep in mind that when you look at this particular race, you're going to have... The Denny Hamlins, the Christopher Bells, and the Kyle Larsons eating up a lot of those, uh, uh, you know, short odds. Throw in the fact that William Byron, his odds are going to come down. Chase Briscoe's odds are going to come down. Um, even though there are some drivers where you might be able to uh, eat up or, or free up some of those uh, points because he did not run as planned but let's go ahead and check it out here first of course we're going to lead off with the starting lineup and there you go alex bowman kyle larson and william byron those are your top three and let's see can we uh, we can't really juice this up too much more all right so those are the top three and what do they have in common well you know okay so there you go and oh it's martin trucks jr again it's martin trucks jr again Another nice qualifying. All of a sudden, Mar Martin Truex Jr. has been qualifying well. But he's still not finishing races. As a matter of fact, this could be the last race for Martin Truex Jr. in the playoffs. And it probably will be. Chase Briscoe. Now, I tooted my horn about Alex Bowman being my top long shot play from Tuesday. You know who Chris, uh, Chris, Chase Briscoe was? He was CJ's top long shot play. So CJ and I feel pretty good right now about getting Alex Bowman at 40 to 1 and Chase Briscoe at 35 to 1. Of course, still got to go out and win the race, though. Christopher Bell, we know, uh, again, you got Bell, you got Larson. Uh, we still haven't hit Hamlin yet, but there he is. There's Denny Hamlin. He's uh, surprisingly just behind Carson Hosevar. Carson, by the way, Hosevar is not the most surprising in the top 10. It's right there, Corey LaJoy. He's ninth. Good to see. And then there's Chase Elliott. See, this is the perfect spot. I think I might have even mentioned this. Is This is exactly where I wanted to see Chase uh, because I just could not believe that Chase Elliott was 18-1 to 1 on Tuesday. So, uh, you know, I, 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 I just jumped all over those odds. And uh, he ended up being one of my top picks. Uh, and he looks a lot better than my other top pick, I'll tell you right now. Uh, Brad Kozlowski, who does not look good at all, very surprisingly. So uh, he's got a lot of work to do. But there's your top ten. And what do you see that's uh, in common besides those top three all being Hendrick drivers? Well, it's still the Chevys. And that is the fact that Chevy, uh, again, you got the top three. Uh, you also uh, have, I believe it's six in the top ten. Um, here's another thing that's important to note. And that is that 
this was this is a little bit of a surprise that Chevy has looked really strong here t- today because Chevy, as we mentioned the other day, has only won once at uh, Bristol, and that is, I think, uh, what, since, uh, I don't know what date it is actually, but I know it's been 11 races. They've won once. So they have one win in the last 11 Bristol races. That was Kyle Larson in 2021. Toyota in that time span with six wins, Ford with four. But it's been uh, Chevy, all Chevy so far in, in qualifying and practice. So they're trying to uh, maybe start a, a new trend on their own. And so far, they look really strong. And even though, if you look at it, I mean, again, CJ had Byron as his top pick. And I had Elliott and Bowman in two of my three picks. So we, we, we went Chevy uh, out of, what, four? Because uh, CJ also had Kyle. So C- CJ actually had two Chevys, and I had two Chevys. So, and it's worked out for us. Okay, now, let's uh, round out the rest. And you see Bubba had a really good day overall. Uh, Ty Gibbs, not as good in qualifying, but he ended up the fastest driver in practice. Um, But it all depends on the odds for Ty Gibbs. Uh, Reddick, Busher, uh, there's Logano all the way down here. Now, what's important about this little mark here, this 20 mark? Well, as we said the other day, if you want to win at Bristol, you better be in the top 20 because only one winner has come from outside the top 20 since 2005. And that was Kevin Harvick, 24th, 2016. So that's a a big job ahead for Ryan Blaney and Brad Keselowski. Or if you want to also include Kyle in that 29th. I mean, Sindrick, he's, he's 27th. But the, here's the problem with at least three of them. Kozlowski didn't do much in practice either. Sindrick, same. Kyle, a little bit better. 17th, okay. But still only 17th. Ryan Blaney, on the other hand, my boy Blaney, he was second fastest in practice. So, and, and again, we talked a little bit about this last week. When you start off... Because you're always going to start off, of course, in practice. When you start off in practice in really good shape, a lot of times, sometimes, the qualifying session is about trying new things. Uh, even though sometimes the practice session is. Again, it's not 100%. But th- my point is, is that, again, because what is practice? Practice is the most... Uh, equal to what you're going to see in a real life in a real racing setting because you're not just running a lap or two in, in qualifying you're, you're out there running laps whatever it is I don't know how many laps did they run here to this? Oh, I'll check practice Matter, you know what let's, check, let's just round them out you can see the rest here because I'm going to go ahead and uh, pop up practice alright so here's practice so let's get that Ryan Blaney so Look at that. He had 101 laps. Now, again, it's a short track. So it's almost like 50 laps at a regular racetrack. But anyway, that's a lot of laps. And he ran what? A lap or two? A couple laps qualifying? All right. So that's why, uh, look, some handicappers live and die in practice over qualifying. And there are always going to be tracks that we say, yeah, but you got to look at the trends. And if if it says, look, look at the trends here at Bristol. Bristol, short track, most of the time you would consider qualifying to be very important for that reason. And it is at Bristol. Six of the last seven winners at Bristol have started in the top five. The only one out of the seven that didn't, Chris Buescher, started 20th. Again, inside the top 20, 20th in 2022. And how about this for a longer extended trend? The last 22 winners, okay, 14 of them started in the top five. Five of those were on the pole. Bowman will try to make it six. So 
the we went to cutoff points. We've got the top five as a cutoff point. We've got the top twenty as a cutoff point. And we're definitely not cutting uh, Chevy out of the picture because if they would have had a slow day, then compared to the stats coming into the race, it would have been all right. Well, that's it. Chevy's done. Forget it. But that's just not the case. All right, so look, here, here are the drivers. Now, Blaney is, without a doubt, the best driver that showed something in practice that didn't have anything in qualifying. Okay, so Blaney's, and, and considering he's starting 22nd, he, and he was 15-1 to 1 on Tuesday, I, I, I think the second place practice speed will keep him around 15 to 1. Maybe you, if anything you're going to get an extra few points. 18 to 1 that 20 to 1 area. Anything more than that and which again it can happen. I say this all the time. I, I'm not the I'm not the handicapper here. I'm not the one that sets these odds. And some of these odds just I, I look at them and I'm just shocked sometimes. But anything better than that and I would I would really think about trying to score big because I think Ryan Blaney at some point in his career is going to end up uh, a, a, a pretty good driver, a pretty successful driver at Bristol because he shows you know he shows moments. You know, he's got to win in the Xfinity series. He has a runner up in the Xfinity series and he's had moments in the Cup Series. So, and this is the other thing we talked about, which is very important, when you're bringing guys like Gibbs into the picture, Bristol is normally a track that it's going to take you a time. you gotta, you got to work yourself in. And I'm not talking about, oh, well, he, he had eight appearances in Xfinity Series. No, I'm talking Cup experience. You have to have some experience at Bristol to really know what you're getting involved with. And I think at some point, I think I, I think Blaney is going to start turning his career around at, at, at Bristol because I just think this is a good track for him. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, maybe he just doesn't know it yet. All right, so uh, let's talk about some of the other guys that I think might have a pretty good chance. And, well, look, Ty Gibbs. He's, he's the second driver, as far as stats-wise, uh, that did not do well in qualifying, even though he was 13th. That's okay, but fastest. Now eight to one. We just CJ and I just could not believe that Gibbs was eight to one. That was just so ridiculous. That was a bad number. It just didn't, uh, it, it's again, he's a young kid, and 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 we've seen him have success at Bristol. But that's the problem. We're not uh, Ty Gibbs can even go out there on Saturday night and he could lead another hundred and twenty laps. But it's about can you do it the entire night. Or can you do it when it matters the most? That's the hard part. Is is can you sustain it? And in the third quarter and the fourth quarter of the race, can you be there? And 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 and, and, and I would suspect that Ty Gibbs, from what we've seen, is going to end up a very good Bristol driver. But the guy has never won a race in his Cup Series history, and you were putting him at eight to one at Bristol. I thought that was insane. My point here is. Even though he's fastest in practice, I have to believe you're going to get better odds. Maybe 12 to 1. That's my guess, is you're getting around 12 to 1. Would I take him? No, I still wouldn't take him. The only way I'd take Ty Gibbs, even though he's fastest in practice, would be if he was somewhere close to 14 or 15 to 1. That's when I'm going to consider it. Some may not take him, but I'm going to consider it at 14 or 15 to 1. Anything lower than that, I'm just not getting, I'm, I, I'm not going to chase that number. I'm just not going to do it. All right, Bubba. Bubba was pretty good. Bubba, where, where is Bubba here? Sixth in practice, 11th in qualifying. That was a pretty good run for Bubba. Pretty good day, I should say, for Bubba. He has no good history here at Bristol, and I don't anticipate that he's going to win this race. And he was a pretty big long shot, too. What was his number? Coming into the 55 to 1. I will say this. That his odds probably drop a little bit. So, you know, maybe he's one of those drivers that you're going to get at 40 to 50 to 1 that might be worth a buck. 
But here's the thing. There's not a lot of long shots. Again, based on the history, starting position at Bristol, based on the way practice and qualifying has looked to me, I, I just I, I don't see a whole lot of options outside the top 10. Again, maybe you, you put a buck on Wallace if you get good odds. Maybe you consider Gibbs if you're getting good enough odds. And I would definitely look at Blaney. Again, I need better odds than 15 to 1, I'll tell you that much. If something happens where he's still 15 to 1, then uh, that's a different story. But Blaney now should be more like, as I said, 18, 20 to 1 or more. And then I think he's worth it. Because the rest of them, uh, I, just looking at it from a, from a practice point of view here first, okay, Logano did improve. From 20th to 11th, not as much as Blaney, his teammate, but he did improve. Just not seeing it for Logano, but you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if Joey Logano actually, at some point during the race, uh, you see him somewhere near uh, the lead. Uh, maybe he, uh, you know, makes, uh, you know, makes a run at some point. You know, he's got a couple of wins here. He's led a lot of laps, but he just hasn't led a lot of laps lately. Only seven laps led in his last seven at Bristol and a little slow here for me. So uh, just I don't think it's going to be Joey Logano's week. Uh, there's LaJoy, not as fast as qualifying, but still very solid. Ninth and 13th combination is excellent. Uh, McDowell, we were saying, look, he actually has been pretty damn good here in the last three trips. I think it's been 11th, 8th, and 11th. Uh, so we were very interested, interested because he's like this uh, qualifying machine uh, this year. Uh, but he just uh, didn't show that, so um, yeah, I, I need to. See, I needed to see another Mike McDowell, you know, top five or something like that. We didn't get it, so I just can't go down that road. And there's Truex, not as good as qualifying. See, Truex at this point over the last several uh, races, he's been able to turn a good lap out of two, and I'm sorry, but that's just not good enough when the practice speeds are slower. And again, that's a little bit more. And of an example of what you're going to see for the entire race. And what what have we seen out of Martin Shrooks Jr. for the longest time this season? Nothing. All right. And there's Kyle. Now look, Kozlowski, as we said, too slow. 20th here, 23rd qualifying. Uh, you know, Burton, is he really a playoff driver? Look at Denny Hamlin. This is the biggest surprise. But I look at it the same way I just looked at Blaney, except the opposite. Okay, that because I was like I was saying, sometimes you screw around with practice because you already know what you're going to do in qualifying, and I and I don't really think that this is going to mean anything. I just don't. Um, maybe it does, but I, I I'm 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 not going to buy it because he's just too dominant, not only at this track but at these tracks this season. Don't forget, there's only. There's two drivers that have been, like, really, really good this year on the short tracks. And they're two of the favorites. They're the two, they're the two drivers that should be up and above the favorites. And I'm not even including Christopher Bell. It's Larson and Hamlin. Because, Larson, because Hamlin has won on three of the four short tracks this year. Okay? He won Bristol. He won Richmond. He won Dover. Even though Dover is not a short track, but what I mean is is that it's either the short track or the concrete track. That's what I try. Those are the similar tracks that we look at at Bristol. Dover, because it's concrete, and of course the two, Martinsville, Richmond, Bristol. And Hamlin's got three wins on, on the four of them. All right, and, and he's led like 1,200 laps. By the way, just so you know, in case you had forgotten, Denny Hamlin has won this race. Actually, has run here at the track the last two times he's visited. That is very rare. And maybe this is a good... You know what? Maybe what it is telling you is, well, three in a row? Can he really win three in a row anywhere? I mean, that's that just doesn't happen. It's hard enough to win back-to-back -back at a track. So... Uh, that's working against him. Maybe you turn to Larson this week. Because Larson is the other one that has been really, really strong on these tracks. The difference is, is Hamlin's been winning them. Larson, fifth at Bristol, third at Richmond, second at Martinsville, second at Dover. And by the way, he's led at least 17 laps 
in nine of the last ten races at Bristol with nine top tens, three runner-ups, and that win I told you about being the only Chevy during that time span. So nobody else here just uh, open, you know. I just I just don't see anybody. Reddick, no, didn't even qualify in the top fourteen. Busher, no, uh, not interested in him. Um, yeah, Chastain, forget it. You know, he's just like Truex, basically. He, he's done. He's been done for a while. Suarez, no. Um, so yeah, that's why we have to go right back up here to the top, and we. Uh, we're going to end this show by, where are we? Are we in the right spot? Yep, yeah, I think we are. Moving on up here to the qualifying one more time. Let's go through this. So you have Bowman, Larson, Byron, Briscoe, Bell, Hosevar, and Elliott. Are all, the, all, the, the, all of those drivers had practice and qualifying runs in the top ten. And, and, and that's so that, that's really what I'm trying to say here is that there are so many drivers, good drivers, okay, good ones, that that we thought were going to be the top drivers coming in here, all looked really good today. So why would I look on the outside? Why would I do that? Uh, when you have again, even Bowman and Briscoe, then they might have, might have excuse me, they might not have been favorites according to Vegas, but once again, CJ and I thought that they were going to. Uh, have potentially a good race on Saturday night based on the odds they were getting. So Bowman's up there. Briscoe's up there as the long shots that we like. Then you got Larson's up there. CJ's top pick, Byron's up there. Bell, one of the top three at 5-1 to one on Tuesday's up there. And then Elliott's up there. And, 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 and again, I still think he's going to be the bargain. Sitting there in 10th place, nice and quiet. I, I just I don't get it. Uh, why Chase Elliott's eighteen to one? I just I just don't get it. Since they've been driving next gen, okay, he's finished eighth, seventh, and second at Bristol. Okay, that's one thing. This year, on these tracks, okay, fifth at Richmond, third at Martinsville, fifth at Dover, eighth at Bristol. That's really solid. He has four top fives in his career here. He's led over 400 laps here. Okay, that's okay. It's nothing great, but it's okay. And in the Xfinity Series, he's raced five times. All of them in the top 10 with a 6.6 .6 average. Now, do, am I trying to sit here and say that he should be 6-1? to one? No. Th those trends don't equate to 6-1. to one. But to me, they don't equate to 18-1. to 1. I, I believe Ch Chase Elliott should have been somewhere no worse than 12-1. to 1. No worse. If anything, look, it, it, Elliott should have been 8-1, to 1, not Gibbs. How Gibbs was 8-1 to 1 and Elliott was 18-1 to 1 on Tuesday, I just... And you know what? Gibbs' odds would probably come back a little bit, even though he was fastest in practice. Maybe he won't. I'm not so sure where Elliott's going to go. I'm not even so sure Elliott's going to take a lot of money now or the odds are going to change much. So I still think you're going to get a, a good a good number on Elliott. I still think Gibbs is going to be favored over Elliott, which, okay. Does that mean Gibbs won't beat out Elliott on, on Saturday night? No. But he's going to have to do it. I'm going to bet that he, I'm going to bet against that. And I just think Elliott's got a lot because he's got a lot more experience and that's going to be a big help for him. Just if you're fantasy-wise thinking about Elliott or Gibbs. And again, don't forget, CJ's got Byron as his top pick here. And Byron has never led a lap at Bristol. But he won Martinsville. He has some decent runs here uh, in the next gen. And... He looks like what we've seen from William Byron before at this time of year. He looks like he is primed to win a race. And that's and, and so that's why I believe CJ went for him. I understand exactly what CJ was doing, especially because William Byron was 15 to 1. You're not, I'd, be, I'd be shocked if you got 15 to 1 on William Byron after today. 
But we'll see what happens with the odds. Oh, and Briscoe. Again, Briscoe, it's not like there's any stats that jump out at you. Okay? Uh, he's never led a lap in four cup races at Bristol. He's never had a top 10. Okay? But overall, this is a pretty good, this should be a good track for Bristol. Especially when you take a look at the fact that in the Xfinity Series, six races, four of those were top fives, two of those were runner-ups, one of those was a win. And, as CJ astutely pointed out on Tuesday, he is peaking at the right time of year. And this is further proof. Fifth in qualifying, eighth in practice, the fastest forward. Matter of fact, the only Ford in the top 13, Chase Briscoe. And remember, that's the cutoff line. Okay? Six of the last seven started in the top five. And there's Chase Briscoe. And don't forget about the other cutoff line, too. And that being the 20th position all the way down here. And again, also, don't forget that that cutoff line is not just about six of the last seven. It's about 14 of the last 22. So that's going to wrap it up. Would really like to know uh, what you think about the race tomorrow. Uh, the weather looks like it's going to be fine. No problems there. Uh, also, just let us know what's on your mind in general uh, about uh, the playoffs. Again, it's a not only a big race because it's Bristol, but it's a playoff race. And even more importantly, it's a cutoff playoff race. So the first round will be over. We start knocking off some dead wood here. But the interesting thing about this round is Denny Hamlin, who who who, who ended up uh, practicing 24th at Bristol today, is on the cutoff is outside of the cutoff line, and Kyle Larson is like one big mistake by him or someone else uh, tomorrow night early in the race it could knock him out of the playoffs. So uh, we talked all about that. You got a link in the description. You can check it out. We have a lot more detailed information on the race and on the playoffs and all that kind of stuff. Uh, CJ and I do that every Tuesday. So uh, don't forget to check that out here on Prime Sports Network. And of course, you could also check it out the full rate, the full video, as I said, whenever we have F1 and NASCAR together over on Mystery Cautions. So uh, look, uh, enjoy yourself because I know I am tomorrow night. We know that we're not going to have to worry about weather. So it should be a lot of fun watching Bristol. Uh, it, it, the race wasn't as good earlier in this year. Denny Hamlin, you know, he kicked butt. And I, I, I look, the problem is, is the car. This particular car uh, has just not really made it um, uh, uh, possible for us to have that banging, the old school, you know, bumping and banging at Bristol. You know, these cars are, you know, if you're fast, you're, 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 you're fast and it's hard to catch you. And, 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 and a few years back when that wasn't the case, it, it was a lot harder for drivers to kind of speed away from you. There was always somebody on your tail, you know, so if somebody was fast, that's okay. You always had at least another driver or two that were just as fast and it made it real interesting. We just haven't had that lately with this next gen I don't know. I we'll hope that uh, that changes tomorrow night a little bit. So uh, check it out. I know you will, or else you wouldn't be checking this video out. Uh, subscribe. We really appreciate that. And also like and share the video uh, if you can. We also appreciate that. And uh, let, let us know what's on your mind. Uh, we've got three more rounds to go. So we still have a long way to go before we crown a champion in 2024. But we are going to eliminate four drivers tomorrow night after the Bass Pro Shops night race at Bristol Motor Speedway. And we're going to see you again on Tuesday right here. Actually, I, I, we're, we're going to be, because um, remember, it's, an, it's a NASCAR race, no F1, for the next month. So uh, we, we'll probably see you right here on Prime Sports Network once again on Tuesday when we get you ready for next Sunday's round of 12 at Kansas. So uh, enjoy the race, everybody, and we'll see you in a few days.